Welcome back to our program for this evening. My name is Pastor Troy Christopher, and here is my beautiful wife of 15 years. Yes, my wife of 15 years. <laughs> this year we, we make 16 years since we are married. And um, prior to that, we, we court for approximately five years. So this year we'll be together for 21 years. Bless the Lord. God has been extremely good to us. So today we'll be sharing with you on the subject of puberty, but we will be looking at more of uh, practical experience. We're going to be sharing some of our uh, experience with you um, growing up as, as teens, uh, as well as now we have um, teenage, kids. teenage kids, right? So we're going to be sharing some of those um, experiences with you. Um, I just want you to know that, you know, either myself or my wife, we are not, no experts um, in, in these areas or in this area that we are discussing tonight. But um, we just want to share some of our experience, experience. with you. And I think it will, um, you know, go far away. It is the Apostle Paul um, who said in, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11, he says, You know, when I was a child, I spoke like a child. I taught like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. This basically speaks of, you know, we don't stay one way at, at all time. You know, the, there is that transitional period. And that's basically what we want to talk to you about tonight, the stage of, of puberty. As Paul says, you know, and as myself and wife were discussing earlier in preparation for this evening, is that when you're a child, for example, a, a, a baby, we were discussing a baby and you know our baby respond um for example um let's say if maybe the baby might be six months nine months um the baby basically respond to song that's according to um dr gary chapman um, in his book which speaks of the, the five love languages he, he said that um, in those you know early age um the baby only respond to song so for example you can say um you sweet little thing, you, and they will laugh, and then you will say, you know, you little rascal, always behaving bad, and they would still respond to that, you know, because they basically respond to song. Yeah. Um, but like Paul is saying, as you as you grow, you know, you put away. I like that because, I mean, as Paul was saying, he said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. Yes. So when you were a child, you uh, the, your conversation. Yes. With your friends, with your peers, yes. it was somewhat childish. Yes. And even as you grow, even as you develop, you, you, you're taught, you think in, or you communicate. Yes. It's, you know, that of a child, but like we say, as you transition now, it's different. You, yes. you try to adopt new ways and, and you respond to things differently. differently. Beautiful. I love that. All right, so it's from this perspective we'll be sharing with you tonight. Um, as I said, you know, some of our personal experience, um, as well as, you know, um, the knowledge we would have gained um, in the process. Um, so we want to jump straight into the, the, the topic for tonight. So tell us or tell the audience um, your understanding of puberty. What is puberty? Well, so puberty is simply a series of changes your body will go through as you grow up. Yes. This usually happens between the ages of 8 to 13 years. Okay. In every child, it's different. Yes. Because some children, the puberty gland, are very eager, yes. while some would normally take their time. A little more longer, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the important thing to note there is that we all will go through, or they all will go through puberty. Mm -hmm. It just takes a little time. Beautiful. And the more we educate and inform them about it, mm. it's the better for them and us. For some children, oh. they may feel nervous about this process. Okay. But as parents, what we have to do is to educate, inform them about it. The process. Know, let them know what they're about to go into. The, some of the expectations, some of the changes that they will go through go or their body will go, go through. through. So there we have it. Puberty and what is puberty. Now, let's look at how we actually prepare them for this process, right? Because, of course, um, you know, 
as you said earlier, they might be a little bit uncomfortable, yes. you know, to talk. How, how do we actually prepare them for this process? Awareness. Awareness is very important. Okay. Informing and educating them about it, it's a key role. It's vital at this point. Beautiful. So what we have to do is create a type of atmosphere oh. so that they can feel comfortable. They mm. can be relaxed. Mm. And at that point is when you give them the information that is necessary or relevant. I like that because um, sometimes kids are very jumpy. When, when it comes to certain so topic, true. yeah, you, at, you know, at a certain age, you try to talk to them about sex or you try to talk to them about certain private things. You yeah. know, they're a little, you know, shy and, you know, nervous about yeah. the process. So I, I like that you, you make them um, comfortable, you mm -hmm. make them feel comfortable and then you're able to, you know, you create the atmosphere that is conducive and then you're able to give you know, them the information, the information that is relevant. That they need. That's beautiful. You're getting beautiful information tonight. All right, let's continue with the process. So um, I want to ask the question now. Let's say, for example, um, we have a case where um, it's a, a, a single mother and maybe she has a son or maybe two sons um, or a case where it's a single father, single parent father, um, and he has, let's say, two daughters, right? How, how do we treat a situation like that? Because I know sometimes it can be very uncomfortable. And, and not only that, with the stigma that is attached, especially to fathers and, and daughters, we, you know, we heard, you know, a lot of, you know, rumors, and some of it, you know, is actually true. And the stigma that is attached to fathers and daughters. Um, with that said, we're not dealing with the extreme aspect of that tonight. But um, let's say, how, how does a father talk to his his, his daughters? Um, you know, or in a situation like that where it's, it's a single parent home and the father, you know, with the you know with two daughters, how do we deal with a situation like that? Or in another case where a single parent home with a mother and our sons. Explain to us, how, how should we deal with a situation like that? Because we have to educate them. That's great. But before I um, probably answer that, what, what I realized over the years is that parents find it, it was very um, unusual or it was not a topic that was really discussed. Mm -hmm. um, persons would have gone into it and, 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 you know, telling their children about this kind of forum. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure for whatever reason, maybe um, if it's the content or the volume of it, mm -hmm. or maybe they were shy, maybe they didn't have enough information, I'm not sure for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. But long ago, you never find, you know, too much of this conversation, conversation yeah, going on in homes. Talking to their kids, you know, about the physical changes yes. in their body and about sex and all of these stuff. I, I think it's true uh, a lot of times, um, you know, and even now, um, parents do shy away from the subject. So true. But back to the question that you asked, in the sense of a single parent family where you have maybe a mom and her son, if she is not able to talk with him mm -hmm. or relate to him, mm -hmm. what she can do is maybe to have a pastor or or an uncle mm -hmm. to relate to him the kind of information that he need mm -hmm. to go through the process. process. Let him know the, some of the physical changes and some of the signs that he will experience. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want them to, you know, have to be seeing the signs and so before you talk, talk to, them. to them. about Yes, you don't want them to be caught off guard, but they must be informed about the process. Beautiful, I like that. Yes, so and in the case of a, a single parent home where you might have the father and his daughter, then if he feels somewhat uncomfortable talking or relating to her about this topic, then maybe he can get his mom or his a sister or an aunt or somebody that she he knows that she will feel comfortable around because you mm -hmm. remember we have to create the type of atmosphere mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. because without the atmosphere you know, it's, you cannot, there's not mm -hmm. much you can get over. So you have to create a type of atmosphere. That is beautiful. Um, out here listening, um, those of you that are tuning online, you know, if you're a single parent, 
whether father or mother, you have kids and you're comfortable, you are a little uncomfortable, you know, in, in, in talking to your yeah. kids. You, you know. need to get help. Yeah, get help, get a third party in, That's you know, somebody that you trust, yes. you're comfortable with. And they can assist with, um, you know, guiding, with yeah. guidance um, in terms of sharing information. Yes, because they need to be aware. Yes. All right, so we're moving along with the topic smoothly. Um, so what really, um, I'm curious as to, you know, what, what caused puberty? Remember, we're not experts, but I would have done some research. And I, what I realize is that for the female, there's a puberty gland that is located beneath the front of our brain. Okay. And this is what starts or triggers the process. Okay. So upon that triggering, you find that there's a, a signal that is sent okay. to our ovary, okay. telling it to make a special chemical or hormone. And okay. this is called estrogen. Wow. I, I've never really heard about that before. Yes. So explain to us what exactly is estrogen. So estrogen is basically an hormone in the female mm -hmm. that triggers most of the changes and development in our body. Mm -hmm. Many of these changes will happen over a period of time and at a different rate for everybody. So you find persons, you know, like we said earlier, some persons, the, the, the puberty gland are very eager while some would normally take their time. So you might find children, some children in they're coming in very early mm -hmm. and on the other hand you have children that are coming in very late <laughs> that was some vital information there so tell tell us exactly what are some of the signs um you know some of the physical changes to look for in in you know in the process of puberty what are some of the signs we look for and you know so for the female you will find her getting a little taller and her body getting a little wider mm -hmm. and because lots of cases you find sometimes, you know, we would just say to them, oh, you're stretching and not realizing that you're starting to experience the process of puberty. Okay. So these are things we have to look for. This is some, one of the signs that we can look for and we can know that the process of puberty has started. Okay. And in that case, now you find as a, a mother, you have to now start to invest in more undergarments and even new clothes for them in some cases. Okay. Yes, and then the other um, physical changes that you will see th there also is they start to grow air in certain parts of their body, okay. in the pubic area. Okay. They start, little ears begin to shoot. Okay. Yeah, and along with that, you find them craving sweet. Okay. And with that, they, they, it tends to give them body odor, Mm. is one of the other thing body odor and you find with that also they start to get little pimples on their faces okay yes with some of them the air and their faces becomes much oilier than usual than mm. the norm mm -hmm. they also have breast growth all right we're talking about parents and children relationships and our focus tonight is on Puberty. puberty. Yes. For, so for these young girls now that are now into getting into this, mm -hmm. they feel somewhat happy there's this joy, joy. Mm -hmm. because they're somewhat excited, mm -hmm. you know, to wear these little trainees because they come in a lot of colors and, 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 and size and, you know. So what I realize over the years is that, you know, even um, some adults, you might ask them, well, what size of bra you wear? And they, they're not sure. Mm. Because, I mean, it's like you, you just go into a store and you put on a bra and whichever one fits. And sometimes going purchasing a bra, you might have on other clothes and you try on. And then when you get home, then it's not your size really because maybe around there it's tight or the cup is too full or too small. So you find a lot of persons have challenges even at this. Selecting the right. Yes. So here is a little tip that you can use at home mm. to assist yourself or maybe your kids mm -hmm. in finding the right bra size. Now, you take a tape measure and you put it around mm -hmm. your chest area okay. that's just beneath your bust there. Mm -hmm. And you measure that. Now, that's the frame we're trying to find for the frame there. Mm -hmm. 
if you have an even number, mm -hmm. then you add four. If you have an odd number, you add five to that. Okay. So let's say, for instance, we take that tape measure and we put it just under our bust at our chest area there. Mm -hmm. And we have 30. No. Like I said, if, it's, if you have an even number, mm -hmm. you add four to four that. To that. Mm -hmm. So we have 30. So we had four to that. Yeah, so we yeah. have 34 there. So you keep that in mind. Your bust line or your frame there is 34. Okay. Now, the other part is that you take the tape measure now again and you measure your bust line. That's the fullest part of your bust. Mm -hmm. That's just over your chest area, the fullest part of your bust there, you measure that. Mm -hmm. Let's say when you measure, you have 35. Now, you have 35 as your bust line, mm -hmm. and the frame is 30, and you add the 4, you have 34. Mm -hmm. So, you have 35, and you have 34. Mm -hmm. Now, how to determine what cup you wear. Now, what you normally do if you have, if, let's say if it's both of them, is if your line and your frame is the same number, mm. then in that case, you wear an A, A cup. Okay. So, remember we would have done a measurement mm. and we had 35 for the bust line mm. and the frame, we had 34. Mm -hmm. So it's different by one. Okay. So in that case, that person would wear an A cup. Okay. If it's different by two, or if it varies by two, mm -hmm. then you wear a B cup. Okay. If you find it different by a differ or vary by three, mm -hmm. then you wear a C cup, and it goes on like that. Okay. So once it's the same. Mm. Once you would have measured your frame mm. and your line, mm. and it's the same, mm -hmm. you wear an AA cup. Okay. And if it's different or vary by one, you wear an A cup. So in that case where the person had a frame of 34 mm. and their line was 35, mm. that different by one. Mm. So that person wore an A cup. Okay. Beautiful. That's a lot of information. Yes. <laughs> I think it's, it's necessary because, like my wife, well, I, I really don't know much. I would accompany my wife from time to time to pick up certain stuff. I'm not, you know, the old shopping person, but I would <laughs> accompany. And, you know, it's always, you know, a challenge when, you know, you go in mm -hmm. certain stores to, you know, to wait. That's true. <laughs> yeah, wait. And like I said, sometimes by time, if you if you don't know how to do it, and then by time you get home, you just pick up a bra, you know, just look at it and say, you know, this one might fit. And then when you get home, it's, it's, not it's too tight or the cup might be too full or it might be too, you know, tight, then it's uncomfortable. Beautiful. So it's important that we get the right size of bra, whether for ourselves or our kids. All right, so continue telling us about some of the, the physical changes. We're talking about some the physical changes, you know, that, you know, our kids yes, experience as through. they grow up. Mostly, we, my wife is fo focusing on the female. Yes. So tell us. Yes, yeah, so, like, for the female now, again, they have vaginal discharge. Okay. So you find sometimes that they go and take to take a bath or so, and they, you know, when they get down there, they realize that, you know, there's a little spots or so. Okay. And but you remember we said from the inception, mm -hmm. information, you inform them, you educate them. Mm -hmm. So once you would have done this as a parent, mm -hmm. it would not be when a when surprise. they see this, mm -hmm. it won't be as a surprise or they won't get scared in any way. Mm -hmm. So after the vaginal discharge, mm -hmm. then you find the period comes in. Okay. And with that, now there's period cramps and, and, and pain that comes with that. You find some young girls having this before and during the period where they have severe tummy pain for some cases. Okay. And this can be very uncomfortable. Just to so know, these physical changes do not happen all at once, but it's over a period of time. And some persons, in some cases, might feel somewhat shy about talking, mm. you know. As I mentioned before, you have to find ways to talk to them. Talk mm. to your children early about it. Mm. Because like we mentioned, you don't want them to be experiencing these signs. Mm. 
mm. or having to experience them at first hand mm. and then you relating to them. All right, so um, thanks a lot. That's, that's a lot of information you give us there. Um, in similar um, fashion, the guys go through, um, you know, growth in terms of, um, you know, their height. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in, in some cases, they put on some muscles. Um, they go through voice change, where mm -hmm. the voice get um, a lot deeper. Um, that transition, they, they change over to that bass. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and then you start saying, you're a big man, you know, you're, you're getting big. And for some of them, you, you know, you see this acne on, on their face. And yeah. we, we, we would trouble them or tease them, you know. You get love bias and love and stuff like that, right? You know, that's that's what we used to say when you were younger and you start mm -hmm. getting acne or pimple or blackhead, whatever, you, you know, you know it has. Mm -hmm. um, you would say, you know, buy, buy love or, or stuff like that. And you you technically, um, you know, you trouble them. Mm -hmm. um, all of these, you know, changes and then, you know, you would get, you know, hair in certain places on the arm and private area, you know, get your beard and thing and you know. all. So these are some of the changes that the guys, um, they actually um, go through. In addition to that, there is what, you know, I call wet dream, right? They, they you know, that, that process or that phase, they will go through. Um, I can share from, from my experience, um, you know, it was, you know, a surprise to me because, um, I mean, if I, if I should go a little deeper, into my background, um, I didn't actually grow with my biological father. My biological father died in an accident when I was around, I think, about nine years, somewhere around there. Okay, so that, so, yeah, so that I was just about the age you started the yes. process. So my foster father didn't say anything. So I technically had to figure out everything for myself. So, um, you know, when when I first got uh, a wet dream. I was so scared. I got up and start checking myself, examining. I, I thought I, I wet the bed. <laughs> right? I, I really didn't know exactly, you know, what had transpired. But upon investigation and over a period of time, I discover exactly, um, you know, what really transpired, right? And I become a lot more self-conscious and aware, you know. And mm -hmm. as you start to develop, you know, you start increasing knowledge. Right, so it's very important that we spend time talking to our kids. So right? true. Educate them, you know, about the different process before, you know, mm -hmm. the, the peers out there start to you know, tell them all manner of foolishness. You know, mm -hmm. you can experiment here and experiment there, and you know, you got to prove yourself you're a man, and you got to do this, and you got to do all kind of foolishness. Mm -hmm. That's what they put in, you know, into their head. So it's very important, you yes. know, as parents. That we educate them first and early. Yes. Before they no, we would normally see these signs, these we signs. need to inform them, to them, let them know what is it mm. they would expect, what is it they will see. Mm. And and I like how you you mentioned earlier, we create the atmosphere. Yes. Right where it's conducive mm -hmm. to talk, right? You you set the stage, mm -hmm. and then you have you know these conversation with them and mm -hmm. be real. Don't, don't, yes. Don't cover anything mm -hmm. or don't shy away from it or don't hide anything. You unveil, unfold, and you tell them as it is mm -hmm. because trust me, information is out there. Mm -hmm. And um as, as and especially these the kids the, these this, yes. in this <laughs> age they, they they are very smart, very mm -hmm. very smart. Right, um, as you know, some persons would say, you know, some of them like the bar big, or the bar old, right? You know, they they are very clever in some cases. Mm -hmm. they, you know, some of the things they do and say, you know, it's true because at their age, in at at our age, you know, where we were like they, you know, their age, we, you know, were a, a lot more, you know, reserved and so on. But they are a little bit more, a bit and you know, mm -hmm. to the rhythm of the music, right? So it's very important that we still, you know, don't take these things for granted that we. Mm -hmm. You know, set the stage and mm -hmm. we have talks with them. Yes, inform them way before yes. they experience this. Yes. So we talk about some of the physical changes that, you know, happens in our kids as they, you know, go through the stage of puberty. How does, how does this affect them? How does puberty affect them uh, mentally or emotionally? In some kids, they get very self-conscious. Okay. Whereby they tend to, you know like 
like the scripture that we would have read earlier, mm. it says, when I was a child, I speak as a child, you know, your thought was as, as of that of a child. Mm. But even as you grow, they change. Mm. So emotionally, they get very self-conscious. Mm. They tend to, it's not, they don't just run around. You would find them as a child, they run around the place with the underwear and all these things. Mm. As they grow, as they develop, mm. you know, that, normally don't happen anymore mm -hmm. they take pride in how they look and what they wear mm -hmm. their appearance is very important at this time mm -hmm. so you wouldn't find them you know going out the yard with maybe an underwear and all of these things mm -hmm. they make sure they're, they're well attired mm -hmm. whether it's it's to do with their ear or their clothes what they put on mm -hmm. it's important to them at that point I, I think what what from what some of what I observe from our kids as well um, and that's why I've been saying, and I think one of our previous program, that the term social distancing, um, you know, it's not, start, a new. not something new because let's say, for example, you have, you know, teenage kids mm -hmm. that are now exploring, discovering, you know, looking for their own identity mm -hmm. in, 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 in somewhat they, they, they tend to the, isolate themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, that space. Yes, yeah, some of them in some cases have, you know, like mood swings, mm -hmm. you know, they, they lack in the room, you know, and sometimes they're all jovial and nice yes. with you and the next time they just mm -hmm. want to be by themselves. They so, can change mood in, in just flips a second. Yes, yeah, so we, we can probably say that maybe puberty, mm -hmm. you know, would cause them to, you know, have these different... Mood um, swings. Yes, emotional mm -hmm. changes. Yes. In some cases, you find some of them getting frustrated very easily when they, you know, maybe set a goal and they, they, it's, it's hard to achieve or, mm -hmm. you know, they can't get to get achieve. around something. You know, they get somewhat frustrated and they very get fast. angry mm -hmm. and, and all of these emotion and all of these things would come into play. But these emotional changes are important part. Of them working out their own moral value and identity. Oh, beautiful. All right, so we've come to the end of our program for this evening, um, sharing on the subject of, of puberty. We would have discussed um, some of our own experience um, with you um, as, as parents and even as, you know, you know, youngering of some of the experiences we have had. Um, any closing um, remarks, any closing words? Yes, yeah, so remember as parents, what we need to do is try to inform them as early. Mm -hmm. You know, don't wait until you see a physical sign before you, you know, let them know mm -hmm. what to expect Beautiful. because you don't want them to, you know, be fearful or, you know, get nervous about the process. Mm -hmm. So informing them early mm -hmm. about it okay. is very vital, mm -hmm. you know, even as they go through the pre process of parents, we need to be patient with them. Patient, yes. We need to go down to their level, mm -hmm. try to understand what they're going through. Mm -hmm. You know, be emotionally sensitive mm -hmm. to some of their feelings because remember all of these emotional and physical changes come with, you know, different feelings. Mm -hmm. For some children, it's very hard because mm -hmm. let's say like we would mention with the girl with the irregular period and, and the... And the mm -hmm the cramps and, and the pains that she would mm, go it's quite through. challenging, yeah. You have to be emotionally sensitive mm -hmm. to their needs. Go down to their level, try to yes. understand and, you know... Yes, and guide them, them through, through the that process. process. Yeah, beautiful. You know, and even at that time, they need to be a form. Mm -hmm. Give them affirmation, give them love. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very important. That is beautiful, and that has brought us to the end of our program tonight. Thanks for joining us. Um, on behalf of myself and my beautiful wife, we want to say thank you very much for joining us. That has been our program tonight on puberty. God bless you. Do remember to join us Saturday morning at 10 a.m. for our uh, virtual service. Until then, God bless you.